All right, Nick. Hey, I'm super excited. I think this is going to be very, very cool. Looks like you got a vulnerable host you're beating up against. Hey, some that can be compromised easy with Eternal Blue, MS17010. And uh, I don't know, man. Should we crank out a penetration test report for this? I say we do. We just pop the box. Let's run the old school Git UID. So we're running this NT authority system. We've gotten into a box. Yeah, let's try to do, let's do a speed run of a pen test and try and use PlexTrack to get a pen test in uh, in a set amount of time. What do you think? And that would be super fun. A little bit of a race. Hey, I don't know, some pressure quick on the fingers and the clock here. I don't know. Do you think you could get this thing done in like five minutes or so? Maybe that's the goal. Let's five minutes it. or less. Well, hey, let's I will let you run, my friend. But I don't know. I think PlexTrack is probably the right folks to be able to take up this challenge. How fast can you crank out a penetration test report? Should I count you All in, right. my friend? <laughs> count me in. Give me a give me a three count. Let's do it. All right, sweet. I got a stopwatch going. Let's do a three, two, one. The race is on. <laughs> All right. So I'm in PlexTrack now. I'm going to hop in to our project uh, demo, and I'm going to just create a report. I'm going to select my template. I can give it some dates if I wanted to. And we're going to add some reviewers, maybe assign it to some of my hacker buddies. Now that I'm in the platform, I've got my narrative set up. Let's start getting the hacks in there. So I'm going to do go work through it manually. So we found the MS1710 flaw. I'm going to add a finding from uh, our write-ups database, which is basically like findings templates. So you can go and template size your findings, grab them, add them into the platform. Uh, now I'm going to go and edit this finding and we're going to take a look. Let's figure out what that asset was. Let's see. Shell. IP oh, I just typed in shell. I can't hack. There we go. All right. So we've got the IP. Let's go back into the platform and add it. So I'm gonna say that uh, we're gonna create, I'm just gonna paste it in, even though it's not a bunch of things. You could paste one thing or a bunch of things here. I'm gonna paste it in. We could tag it, I'm not gonna tag it. So now we can also come into the platform and add our evidence. So I'm just gonna screen grab this whole thing here and say, yeah, this is my evidence of the hacks. Maybe I'll grab another screenshot of the other part here. Uh, let's see, we should just throw it here. Boom. And we could throw some more evidence here as well. This looks like some sweet hacker nonsense we can add in. All right. So we've got our evidence. We've added our finding. That's pretty cool. Now, let's also think about the rest of the pen test. Now, we do a bunch of manual hacks and cracks, but the reality is, is you're going to be doing other things. Maybe you ran Nessus. Maybe you have Nmap. Maybe you have other tooling output. Let's just add some of that in, too. So for a little bit of a hand wave, we'll say that we ran a Nessus scan and we're jamming it into the platform now. I can't fault you there. I know, hey, we're writing the pen test report in five minutes. We're not doing the pen test in five minutes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that so would gonna, be I am a crime against these. humanity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't doubt there's folks out there who do pen tests in five minutes. Call it good. So I am going to tag those and I'll show you why in a little bit. And I'm going to find this MS1710 as well in here. And I want to tag it as internal. And uh, I'll show you when we go generate the uh, generate the findings later. So. Now we've got our findings in the platform. We can do all sorts of nonsense. I can't really get into the, the guts of what all we could do, uh, but you could come in and you could add evidence to these like we did before. You could add hosts, you could collaborate. So one of the things I like to show is the ability to, as a peer reviewer during a pen test, I can come in and I could add comments and I could do track changes and you know, you get the whole, maybe set the status, say, all right, this is in process and uh, edits have been made. So now this, uh, you know, we can collaborate. It's nice, especially if you're working on a gig with multiple people. You can come in and say, okay, where were the edits made? I can come in, look for that finding, all that fun stuff. Now, we've come in, we add our assets, we add our data, we do all sorts of hacking and cracking. We could then start to generate our report. Yeah, you got a minute and a half left, my friend. I don't know what other loose ends we've got, but let's run to the finish line. All right. Now the report has been generated. We can open it up and kind of walk through it. Uh, it's on. The, it's off screen. Let me drag it on screen and you can see. So we've gotten our pen test report and maybe there's some things you need to do post-processing, maybe not. Um, here's the output. It's clean based on the sections that we selected when we did the selection. We've got our methodology in those sections. Those short codes that you see here are placeholders. You can in-platform kind of find replace. We've got all of the data we have, and then we have our tables here. We have our findings, we have our detailed findings, and we have our evidence. Nice and clean. Um, obviously, you can do a lot of different things, but in five minutes or less, I was able to come in, manually add findings, 
add in some scans, get some data. So just imagine your workflow when you're hacking and cracking and you want to be able to rapidly click button and finish a report. I've got enough time to take a sip of coffee. Absolutely. Which I definitely my don't need. <laughs> Well, hey, I look, I know there are a couple things, I don't know, maybe left to do. We've got to crank out those short codes, uh, maybe clean up a little bit of title, a little a asset name, company name, address, but whatever. Like, I don't think that's going to take more than a minute and 30 seconds if you're already cranking through. You've got the contacts, you've got the customer kind of filled out here. Uh, Absolutely. So dang, man. And actually, to that point, all of this data can also be pre-staged. Your logo, uh, customer logo, the name of the report. Like I actually named the report report. So <laughs> this could be all queued up and ready to roll. So there's really maybe one more once over or a lot of our folks' use case is just save it as PDF and ship it. There is a lot of different things that you can do in the platform, but you know, working through the statuses, being able to collaborate. And then there's the con concept of having like the readout view. So you've got that clean looking um, document style report. But here we could also work on a readout and be like, hey, here's the finding. You know, you've got the finding data here. You could either be reading this out to your client or you could give the client an account. They could log in and just, you know, digitally consume the information based on um, the results of the test because of the role based access control and authorization. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in the platform. Is that a lot of efficiencies? Is that common? Like, do you see a lot of folks hey, genuinely giving the customer, the people that you're working with, like, hey, come on in. Here's access to how we're helping yeah. crank this up. That's really, really cool. Like, a keys of the kingdom a little bit. That's awesome. A significant number of folks are doing what we call digital delivery. So they'll log in in what, uh, you know, a lower privileged user because you can, at the client level, you can authorize user accounts. So for each of the clients, if you treat a client as maybe a business unit or a client as just a workspace, you can authorize user accounts there. And if they have read-only access, when they log in, they click into a report, you know, it's in draft status. You can set it so that users can't even see it until it's published. You can change the status to a published and then they see it. You hold it back until you're ready for the users to log in. When a user logs in, their UI is going to look a little different. They won't have like this and this. They won't have edit capability, but they can come in and change the statuses, maybe ask for retesting. Maybe they come in and say, hey, you know, we're ready for retesting. Can you uh, retest our finding? That's awesome. Can they still see some of the analytics? Or Absolutely. Like oh, man. Nope. You 100%. User role-based access control and authorization applies to analytics as well. So when they log in, they could create their own presets. And if they want to know how many findings per report, per quarter, they want to look for specific CVEs or find, uh, you know, I don't know, and these substatuses are all user customizable. So I made these for like demo, but you want to find all the open and in-process statuses of cloud or AppSec or something like that. Absolutely. You can run in and look at all the analytics and, and get a lot of interesting data. So that digital delivery paradigm is pretty neat. Yeah. I don't think we've ever got to talk about that before, but like, I love that. I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's nothing to like write home about for some folks, but like, I really love the fact that you can be like, Oftentimes, people that you work with, and I think a service-based business is like, look, what have you done for me lately? What have you actually done? How can you prove it? Um, but being able to like literally put down your shields and like, look at look at this, look at all this, look at how the sausage is made. I think yep. that's really really cool. Uh, it's funny because I recently did. It's funny work, working at a report. Uh, a, a platform that helps you with reporting. I just did a talk called death to the document. Uh, and it's the idea that look, it's a, it's a necessary evil. Folks need an right. artifact. That's why we export to a bunch of different ways, but we are actually trying to drive people into the digital delivery paradigm. Uh, and that's the, that's the point of this view and the ability to come in and kind of be able to interact with findings. You know, everything you need as a consumer of security services is here. You have the affected assets, you have evidence. If there is evidence, you have uh, the ability to work with the status right here. So you could consume it in this fashion. You could go and consume it and it starts filtering by tag, fil searching for specific assets, looking at the information here. Or you could go if you have specific hosts in mind. In assets, you could see the same data um, kind of in the inverse. You could look at specific hosts and find the findings related to those assets. There's a lot of neat stuff you can do. One of my favorite pieces of digital delivery is the, actually the attack path. So with the attack path, you have the capability to take findings and observations and just create kind of a, a visual um, relationship so that your consumers of your service, when they log in, they click on attack path, they can see the findings that you think are related. And so they can come in and say, OK, cool, this finding, these affected assets, and they can get the context to it. They can also interact with the finding based on their permission level right here. Then they can see that this is linked to this finding. 
and then get the information. And so you, you create this relationship and this visual kind of interactive visual can really be helpful to stakeholders to understand the impact of maybe chained uh, flaws and vulnerabilities. One last thing I totally want to dance with because I think it's very, very cool because oftentimes I hear people always say like, look, you do a penetration test, you do like some vuln assessment, whatever. You can take it to whatever scale you want, but they always end up saying it's like at a static point in time. And mm -hmm. like, especially with the document, as you're saying, and just death to the document, whatever stupid Word doc or PDF, it, it's a static thing. Uh, but hey, getting into the platform and again, that digital delivery, letting even the clients and customers come in there with you. I feel like you've got this live dynamic sort of updating in real time when you say, look, we're ready for a retest or we see a new finding. That is really, really cool collaboration on it from every direction. So, hey, man, two thumbs up. I love it. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah, that collaborative piece of the puzzle is neat because it's not just collaboration between practitioners who want to work together to get the evidence and get the report out. That collaboration between provider of a service and consumer, whether it's an internal enterprise security team providing services to business units or it's uh, you know a consultative pen testing organization providing to external organizations, uh, that collaboration is the key. Super cool. Well, hey, man, I know we wanted to do a little bit of a speed run, run the race, say how fast can we crank out a penetration test report? And man, you did it like five minutes less than uh, with still some time to to take the coffee break. <laughs> but look, if we put out a if we put out a 15 minute people, a video, folks are going to be like, well, I know it, it took 15 minutes, not five. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be cognizant of your time, but this was very, very cool. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the show and tell. I'm glad, you know, hey, we got through it. We weren't sweating too hard. That was fun. Indeed. Well, thanks for having me. Been a, been a blast. Cool. We'll talk soon.